The problem with beginnings and endings is that they're arbitrary. And we got to that point by following electronic waste. We were interested in some really basic questions. Where is electronic waste produced? Where does it go? And when we started following it, we ended up in places we hadn't expected. We thought we'd end up in dump sites, but actually we ended up in production sites. The problem with beginnings and endings in commodity chain work is that we think that we'd all agree what they are, or maybe thinking like a geographer where they are, that we'd all agree that production starts here and that production ends there. So let me give you an example. Take an iPod. Where do you start? With Steve Jobs at Apple? We were in Dhaka, Bangladesh, where we had followed what we thought was electronic waste. Where do you start at the mine that's extracting the rare earth metals that go into the iPod? Or given that some of the material in the iPod might be recycled, do you start with the recyclers in different parts of the world? And we're standing outside a street front shop, watching old printers get lifted up over people's heads and smashed on the ground. But they weren't being smashed apart because these were garbage. We can do the same exercise with endings. Where do we end? At the cash register, in the house, or if you're interested in electronic waste, in a recycling unit in Dhaka or Accra? The beginnings and endings in commodity chain work are arbitrary. And what we, so what we argue in the paper is that we need to abandon beginnings and endings and instead to think about economic activity as ongoing. All this material was getting collected, sorted, baled and hefted down the street. So the metals and the plastics all went in different directions, but just to focus on the plastics. This was brought right next door after it went through this process of washing and sorting and being turned into pellets. And the pellets were brought to a hot plastic press right next door. So the press is being used by one person to churn out CD and DVD cases. Now some of those cases were being sold domestically, but others were being exported to China, to India. So we started asking ourselves, where are we? What are we witnessing? What we knew was we were not where we expected to be. We had expected to end up in dump sites. That's what the existing e-waste literature had told us to expect. Instead, we wound up in production sites. So we hadn't followed things consumed, used up, and ejected from the global economy. We were right in the middle of it. So was this the end of a global production network, or the beginning of one? The beginnings and endings in commodity chain work are arbitrary. So our alternative is to think about boundaries and edges. And I suppose one, way, one of the ways of thinking about boundaries and edges is to say what they aren't. They aren't predetermined. We don't know in advance of doing the research where we'll find our boundaries and edges. This is where I think there's a big difference between the way we think and the way most commodity chain analyses work. So what are boundaries and edges? They're sites of transformation. They're ways to help us plausibly bound our studies of economic activity. Now, our passage points or transition points aren't predetermined. In terms of what they are, we've been inspired by the work of Anna Marie Moore, as well as broader thinking within actor network theory. Boundaries and edges aren't phenomena out there in the world. They're material relational effects, effects of the intermingling of people, including us as researchers, but also places and things, and how we go about asking questions about them and knowing about their dispositions. So following this work, it means that boundaries and edges are where transformations happen, where the practices and actions associated with a commodity lead to different assemblages of humans and things, where we see things becoming something else through action. And what we realized was that we could follow actions until the things they enacted were enacted as something else, so for example, where copper wires or gold circuitry became unrecognizable as electronics, but were now, say, copper ingots or gold bars, these moments of transformation, the sites where they occurred, and our research about them, those constitute some of the boundaries and edges of the geographies of e-waste. The huge advantage of boundaries and edges is that it doesn't make us stop arbitrarily which we think would be the case in a standard commodity chain approach. It allows us to continue following economic activity, which we think is ongoing rather than linear with sort of 
arbitrary stopping and ending points. So if economic activity is ongoing, the question arises, if we're following things and following action, where do we plausibly stop? There is a big so what uh, about our research. Um, it liberates us, we think, because it allows us to see economic activity for what it is, ongoing and continuous. It means that we aren't shackled by predetermined beginnings and endings that format how we write about economic activity. It's exciting because it means that we can go beyond points that previously we would have stopped. Now, as we write in the paper, we can go from a computer motherboard to a piece of jewellery to a marriage to love. What boundaries and edges offer are ways to keep going, to keep following the action without presupposing inherent directionality. We could, for example, follow the action of e-waste, now gold jewelry, now love, to a wedding ceremony, and from there to... Finding the boundaries and edges allows new rounds of research to emerge. At a wedding ceremony, what relevance do questions about e-waste have? Or, as lead solder becomes air, water, and blood-borne toxins, what relevance do questions about commodity chains have? Boundaries and edges allow us to keep following the action and make our research practices relevant to different, yet associated sites. And it's potentially transformative because our research now moves between one connected research site to another and to another and to another.